Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we are talking about the spiritual override. Do you pretend there is nothing wrong, even if you are incredibly hurt? Have you not thought about an event, person, or place in years, only to have it spring up later, causing havoc on your emotion? Are you ready to heal instead of hold on to stuff? Let's continue our month focusing on back to school. Are you ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join me on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out as I teach you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life get organized, and become more mindful. I'm an award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach, and I destroy the box and examine clutter in all areas. Every episode, I'll give you take action steps that you can easily apply to your life. Come on, let's get started. <laughs> Today's episode is inspired by me. I have recently had a lot of mean girl stuff going on. Now, there's no coincidence in my mind that I have a big high school reunion this year, and I can tell you when the first real mean girl thing happened to me. I was switching from elementary school to junior high, and all of my friends, in quotation marks, ditched me because I wasn't cool enough. Unfortunately, the mean girl stuff didn't discontinue when I left school, went to an all women's college, which was a pretty good experience, one or two friends that weren't friends, and I think in general that's part of life. As an adult, sadly I've had that happen. I, Before the podcast, if you've been a long time listener, you know that I had an international internet TV show called Reawaken Your Brilliance, and another woman who was there and really jealous of me and said some really awful things and it got back to me. And so I've had experience with this mean girl stuff and I'm not alone. One of the attitudes that I've tried to adopt is from the four agreements, love that book, highly recommend it. And number two is don't take anything personally. What others do is about them and how you react is about you. If you haven't read the four agreements, highly, highly recommend it. I was repeating this mantra about the mean girls. What they're doing is about them. How I respond is about me. Then my mentor called me on it. Look guys, I put my heart and soul into this podcast and one of the reasons I'm able to do it is because of my mentor or coach. She won't let me ride stuff out. She calls me on my stuff. The good news is that benefits you. So I was talking about the mean girls and she was like, back up the bus. Do not do the spiritual override. The mean girls are a blessing because they are giving me an opportunity to heal. I could have chosen to let the feelings out, but I wasn't. I was still suppressing. Then, because the universe said, hey, girlfriend, you are obviously not paying attention. I had someone, another mean girl incident happen. I wasn't invited to a birthday party. Now, in the big scheme of things, no big deal. And I truly wouldn't have minded. What hurt my feelings was this person's like, hey, I'm having all this stuff at my birthday party. And I thought, well, if they're sharing that, then I would think that they'd invite me. And they didn't. And I thought, that's kind of mean to tell someone about a birthday party and then not invite them. So another mean girl incident. And it really hurt my feelings. I was able to realize what she did was about her, how I reacted was about me, and I can still be hurt. I'm going to do another podcast at some point about living in the and, because that's something I've been working on for a few years. That's what my mentor was calling me out on. She's like, don't do the spiritual override, don't act like everything's hunky-dory. You can understand it's about them, and your feelings were hurt. It's okay. Because I wasn't choosing to heal it and acknowledge my feelings, the birthday party incident came up. 
if we don't get the lesson, the universe is going to keep on giving us the opportunity to learn it. I know most of you are like me, on a spiritual path or a path of awareness or mindfulness, whatever you're most comfortable calling it. And you probably believe, like I did, that what I was doing is good, healthy behavior. Not taking anything personally and pretending that I wasn't hurt really isn't the ideal reaction. Most of us probably do the spiritual override more often than we think. When we do the spiritual override, we aren't acknowledging the truth. We are distancing ourselves from the feelings. I didn't want to acknowledge the mean girls really hurt me. I wanted to rise above it. I have been working really hard on this because I do it more often than I realize. It's more of a zoning out instead of a zoning in. Oh gosh, I could use a zone bar right now. I've been off sugar for about a month now. The truth was I didn't want to feel the pain or feel that I could survive the pain, although I know on one level that I absolutely can. Or perhaps a part of it was I felt like, hey, I've done all this spiritual work. How can I be so upset? Are you denying something that has happened? Are you afraid of feeling what you feel? We are spiritual beings living in a human body. Even though we keep going around that spiral and we have more and more access to consciousness, it doesn't mean we're going to get caught up in life. I once asked my mentor, coach, awesome lady, about this. She said, we're not supposed to rise above it all, but rather think how we can transcend it. I talk a lot about being present. Can you experience all the ups and downs and own them all, transcend it, and be neutral about it? When we stop doing the spiritual override, we can acknowledge all parts of us and love all of us. How can we stop the spiritual override? Where in your life are you doing the spiritual override? When you figure that out, begin by acknowledging your feelings. Research has shown that suppressing or avoiding your emotions in fact can make them stronger. So if you're sad that your friends dissed you for not being cool enough, you might shove those feelings deep down and eat a few pints of Ben and Jerry's, preferably chubby hubby. The sadness is still present in your mind and in your body as we store emotions. Everything is energy. Something minor might cause you to fly off the handle. Even if you were avoiding sadness, it may come out as anger. Suppressing emotions is your body's way of protecting you during trauma. Emotional release in a non-traumatic situation is your body's way of protecting itself from further damage and releasing stuck emotions. Feelings, nothing more than feelings. Give yourself permission to feel. You are allowed to feel whatever you need to. Try not to judge an emotion as good or bad. For example, anger can serve as a great catalyst for change. I got angry enough to say no to bad relationships and I found my wonderful husband. I was so angry at being treated poorly, I said never again and I stuck to it. If I hadn't taken care of myself that way, I might not have attracted my husband. Remember, unpleasant feelings are part of life. We can't avoid them through resisting them. Our guy Carl Jung said, what you resist persists. If we accept our feelings, it allows us to deal with them more successfully, and once we do that, we can release them. What I mean by that is sitting with your sadness or anger or guilt or shame and really feeling it, know that it won't last forever. In January, I was interviewing someone and I shared the story of someone who had hired me to do some professional organizing for them. I follow up like I do with every client and I didn't hear from her. And I said, 
thanks, I'm canceling our appointment because I haven't heard from you. And this was someone who was an hour away. It was a lot of planning. So I needed to know whether or not I was going to have the job. The woman went nuts on me. She said, I'm going to take you down. You're an awful person. You've wasted my mind. It was a completely irrational, crazy response. Now, one of my fears is someone's going to unfairly so target me on social media and I feel like I have no control over that. I just saw someone I know on Facebook do that to a business, shared her side of the story and didn't share theirs and has completely, in my opinion, I wouldn't say destroyed this business, but has caused significant damage. And if I was a business owner, I would think about legal action. At any rate, this was a big fear of mine, something I had no control over, I didn't do anything wrong. I felt that fear. I said, in the moment, that's the best thing I can do, and all this anger just rose up out of me, and all this fear, just, and I just said, okay, feel it, stay with it. And when you're in that moment, feeling your feelings, it doesn't take a long time to get through it. I'd say it was probably five minutes, I felt it, took a deep breath, and then I had two people I called and said, this is what's going on. My friend who is going to be interviewed, who's awesome, Angel, said, I've got your back. Here's our plan if something happens. Another person locally, I said, here's what's going on. He said, I don't think she's going to post anything because she's an older woman, but here's what we're going to do if something happens. After that, I let it go and said, I can't control it. We'll cross the next bridge when necessary. Nothing ended up happening. I believe that was because I acknowledged my feelings, I felt them, and then I released them. Because remember, we attract who we are, we attract what we are, and that wasn't any in my field. I had released it, I'd let it go. Are you tired of being stressed out every time school begins? Would you or your child benefit from being more organized? ready to be on top of it all and achieve your goals? Our successful school year, get organized, clear clutter, and gain peace of mind, Facebook Mastermind Community can support you. Begin September 6th. More information at reawakenyourbrilliance.com under Life Organization Masterminds. When I was interviewing people on Reawaken Your Brilliance, I cannot think of one person who said that it was easier to suppress feelings than it was to release them. I also share this from experience. We think, oh my gosh, I can't feel that pain. I can't feel that guilt or shame. You can, and when you do, and you're able to release it, you'll probably think, how could I have let this go on so long? It's like a big weight is released. When you feel your feelings, this allows you to not act on your pain, such as hitting someone or abusing yourself. Once released, you can channel it into something healthy, such as making art or cooking. We often see kids have temper tantrums, and they know what they're doing. My mother told me about my niece, Claire, who's now 12, who will probably be like, oh my gosh, Juji, why are you sharing this? She was two. Kids are going to have temper tantrums. She was two or three, and my mom was with her in Target, and Claire started to have a temper tantrum. And my mom let her have it, and she was just flailing rah, 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 on the floor. And after a minute or so, my mom said, Claire, what do you need? And she said, Jen, Jen, I'm hungry. And she said, okay, we'll get you something to eat. So Claire was able to release those feelings, express what she needed, get that, and then she didn't have anything she held on to. She was back to normal. So I'd encourage you, don't see kids' temper tantrums as anything bad. They're actually good, they're releasing all that, and then ask them what they need. How can we feel our feelings? I like to lay down, check in with my body. I ask questions. What needs to be expressed? I feel, hmm, tummy's clenching. What's going on there? Sometimes I get an answer, sometimes I don't. If I don't, I simply start to breathe. I like breath work to feel my feelings. 
I have a variety of different breaths that I do. One, I go the who breath. And then I shake. If you're watching this on video, this looks better, but I shake my arms, I shake my head. I mean, I like to be on a bed because I really like to get into it and, and don't hold back, let it go. The challenge is I need to do this when my husband is out of the house. And now with three cats, it's a little more of a challenge because I don't like to upset the cats because animals are really sensitive. So I try to do it when everyone's napping. You can scream into a pillow. I also will get in the car and scream. I'm like, eh, if I'm driving, there's a decent chance that no one's gonna hear me. Emotions are energy that want to move. So do what you can to allow them to move. Because remember, movement is up and out. I also like to get physical. You could maybe do a circuit class that gets your anger out and allows you to burn a lot of calories or doing a cycle. I like to kickbox and punch bags and do that. Dancing gets you moving. Let whatever sound comes out as you dance. Sound is a great way to release as well. Before I met my husband, I was on and off with someone for a really long time. I'm grateful for this man. Without my experience with him, I don't know if I could have been open to my amazing husband. When it was finally over, I mean done with over, over, no turning back, I cried. I howled like an animal. And after 20 minutes, I was done. And I felt okay. I knew life was gonna work out. The sounds that came out of my mouth were kind of scary. However, it was just what I believe was this just deep emotion that needed to be expressed. I'm also a fan of journaling. I think that that's a really great tool to use. There are many different ways you can become in touch with your feelings. Play around with it. Make a game out of it, especially if this is a challenge for you. I promise, the more you do this, the easier it becomes. If you commit to doing this regularly, you tend not to get thrown off balance as easily. Does stuff still come up? Absolutely. But there's not that knee-jerk reaction and it doesn't turn you into a puddle. Special note, this can be intense. You might have deep emotions come up, especially if there's been some trauma or abuse. Plan a fun or relaxing activity afterwards. Maybe you order takeout, or already have made your next meal. I'm a fan of a good bubble bath. Have a plan in place for when you complete this exercise. I encourage you, if you're unable to do something the first time you try this, don't give up. Take actions from today's podcast. Where are you doing the spiritual override? How can you best get in touch with your feelings? Pick an exercise to release and feel your feelings. What is your post plan after a session of honoring your feelings? On our next episode, we're talking about financial clutter and credit scores. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose deserve and desire. Are you ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would love it if you would rate and review the show because it really helps us in the search ranking. See you next Tuesday at one o'clock. Remember, when you clear your clutter, you can create the life you desire.